Hi guys, Dan here from Waves. In this video, I want to show you how to get started with our new multi-effects modulation plugin, Kaleidoscopes, which is a powerful and creative tool you can use for dialing in some amazing textures, vibe, and movement. And it can also be the perfect tool if you find you're a little bit stuck for ideas in a mix. Say you've exhausted all your options with EQ, compression, saturation, ambiences. Well, have a play around with Kaleidoscopes and you may find that new sound that just makes your mix. At its core, Kaleidoscopes gives you quick and easy access to some fantastic sounding effects, including phaser, flanger, chorus, and tremolo, which are all inspired from legendary analog effects from the past. But there's more. Kaleidoscopes also introduces a very intuitive and powerful trigger section, which you can dial in to listen and have respond to your tracks. <laughs> But first, let me show you some of the main areas of the plugin and play you some examples to help you get started with kaleidoscopes. First, let's take a quick listen to this dance funk style mix without kaleidoscopes and then with. And I've got this across the main drums, the bass guitar, the clean electric guitar, and the distorted electric guitar. <laughs> Let's jump in. Let me show you those four examples up close and personal so you can get an idea how they'll put together and what Kaleidoscopes is doing. Let's have a look at that big distorted electric guitar part. On its own, it sounds nice and big and meaty and rocky, but it doesn't really fit the style of the song. Now what Kaleidoscopes is doing here is giving the guitar two layers of movement, fast moving tremolo, as you can see up here on the motion display, and flanger. Now Kaleidoscopes provides two identical effects engines, one on the left, one on the right, each having phaser, flanger, chorus, and tremolo, with controls down here common to all of these effects. Now these can be used either in series or parallel, or if you choose, you can use just one effects, bypass controls at the top left and right, and if you wanted to switch between series and parallel, you can do so with a button in the middle here. Now, how does series and parallel differ? In series, input enters the left engine and feeds into the right, with the left engine's mix control here, acting as both level out of this processor and level input into the right second processor. And if you need, you can easily reorder these effects by clicking these two arrows. It's a different affair when you're working in parallel, with both engines receiving the same input signal with the mix dial on both of these effects engines, switching to wet effects level controls, which you can use to blend these two effects together. So let's move across over to the bass guitar now and hear how chorus and flanger working in parallel can help to lift this rather safe sounding DI bass guitar. <laughs> So we've got quite a good sound out of the box there. But let's go a little bit further. For phaser, flanger, and chorus, we have this width control, which work in only mono to stereo components of this plugin or stereo. And it does exactly what it says on the tin. It works rather well. Let's put the bass guitar back in the mix and hear how wide we can push this on the chorus. <laughs> narrow about there sounds nice now at the top of each engine you've got modulator types in this drop down menu which offer plenty of choice to get started with but you'll notice this input option here which i had on the base here what is this now input is all about signal into kaleidoscopes, meaning the audio entering the plugin is the modulator itself, which can be set to taste with the sensitivity control below, which controls how much the input signal affects the modulation. Let's listen to this just on the chorus effects on the bass guitar. Let's wind the control all the way to the left and increase the sensitivity. <laughs> A 
But of course, if you wanted to use something different, say like a sign, you can always sync this to the BPM and sensitivity turns into your speed control instead. Some other controls that are important to know are down here in the mixer, input and output controls, a dry level control. So as an example, let me just turn both the levels down on these two parallel effects. And we're just getting that dry level here, which we can increase. We can blend in the level of these effects. And if you wish, turn down the dry level altogether for a fully affected sound. Above this, we've got a drive section, which can add a bit of saturation before or after the effect processing and rotate control for each of the engines. Now, each engine has its own set of filters here, which you can use to shape the tone of each wet signal. So we keep the dry all the way down here just to demo this. We could use this low pass filter to help reduce some of that top end slap sound we're getting with the frets in this performance. Then we can blend in the dry. Put in the second engine. Now character is next to the modulator section here and it's well worth experimenting with as it provides small variations in sound such as adding some top end emphasis. And there's a really easy way to appreciate how these differ in sound simply by increasing the feedback and switching between each of them. Let's have a quick listen on this drum mix. Then when you find one, if you wish, dial back in some of the dry and processed. And you've got an effect there that just pokes out a little bit more. Now this is Kaleidoscope's in collapsed view and you can expand the view at the bottom and this houses the trigger section, which lets you decide when an effect starts and stops. And you've got a few options how to define a trigger, rhythmic and energy. Let's demonstrate this with a really short live electric guitar part, finger picking for the first section and then a nice big loud strum at the end. What you heard there was a very small amount of tremolo playing in the softer parts of that performance. And when the louder finale strum came in, the volume of that passed the threshold down here on trigger two, triggering the chorus effects. <laughs> just one example of course you could use these low and high pass filters as well to help really hone in on sound say like a kick drum or a snare drum in a drum loop with the kick drum triggering one effect and the snare another or you can set this to rhythmical mode say on this drum loop here increase the sensitivity a bit take it out of listen and watch the motion display at the top here it will start and stop in time with the little kaleidoscopes meter down here Okay, there's one more thing I wanna show you, and that's this through mode here, which only works in series. And what it does is it sends the dry on process signal to the right and fully processed, being this left engine, to the left. And that in itself is quite an extreme sound. However, you can engage the second engine, have a similar effect, so like another chorus, which can have maybe slightly different values on the controls, and this will be performing normally, so we're still getting that nice even stereoness to it. So we can use width and level to act as a bridge between the right unprocessed and the left heavy affected, so we get a nice super wide sweeping sound. Let's hear how that sounds in the mix. <laughs> Let's go back around that mix one more time, bypassing kaleidoscopes on both the guitars, bass and drums. Then we'll bring it back in again.
Anyway, I hope you guys got something from this. Hopefully you now know how to get started with kaleidoscopes, how you can use it in a mix, and how you can use the trigger section and all of its features to get some really cool, interesting textures and vibe and movement in your next mix. For more information on kaleidoscopes, click that card at the top right of the screen or visit waves.com forward slash kaleidoscopes. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Dan from Waves and I'll see you again soon. Thank you.